And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of March 6, 2023. I'm Jason Parent with Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to talk about a new program that's come to Aroostook County. It's, it's not new in the world, but it's new here to Aroostook County. It's called Lions Quest. And if you're thinking about the Lions Club in your local community, well, you're not far off. There is a connection there with your local Lions Club. We're going to learn about that in just a little bit when we head to our feature interview with one of our prevention community educators here in Aroostook County and a special guest from Lions Quest. But before we get to that feature interview, we're first going to get to the news and information that you can use again for this the week of March 6th, 2023. And we start in the news and information that you can use with this story. We want to remind folks that we are in the midst of our Cinderella Project of Maine comes to Aroostook County. This is where we work with young ladies across Aroostook County uh, and youth to make their dreams come true for prom, especially those who are unable to otherwise afford uh, to attend prom because of the high cost. We have well over a thousand dresses that have been donated, many of them uh, from prom stores themselves with the tags still on them. We had our first weekend of this event of this past Saturday on March 4th, and we're looking forward to more activity on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. So this week, we're encouraging folks to visit with us uh, on the hours listed there on your screen. Uh, the new boutique for the Cinderella Project of Maine comes to a rustic project this year is on the third floor of the 480 Main Street building on the corner of State and Main Streets uh, in Presque Isle. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with that being the former Key Bank building in downtown Presque Isle, now the Vision Care building of Maine, uh, we invite one and all to visit on the hours listed on your screen on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. If you're looking for more information or if you'd have dresses to donate, we've been very fortunate to receive donations of a number of gently used, oftentimes one-time worn dresses, you can give us a call at 764-3721 or email us at info at acap-me.org. We want to thank our collaborative partners on this, our sister community action program who brought Cinderella Project to Maine. Uh, that's Waldo Community Action Partners for their generosity and their support as we get this project off the ground now for the third time for the third year in Aroostook County. The special enrollment period for CoverMe.gov for those folks who are looking for health insurance um, and have a qualifying life event is obviously now open. It's available at any point in the year. We have moved beyond the open enrollment period, which was at the end of 2023 and into the very beginning, or at the end of 2022 and into the very beginning of 2023. Uh, but if you are in need of assistance and have common qualifying life events like lost or will soon lose comprehensive health coverage, becoming a main resident, uh, adding a dependent or changes in your, uh, your family situation, we certainly encourage you to give us a call. Uh, for a full list of special enrollment period, period eligibility cri uh, criteria, you can visit the cover, coverme.gov website. If you need assistance, and we are offering assistance for folks who are looking to navigate and who are looking to enroll uh, in this uh, special enrollment period, we are encouraging you to contact our two um, uh, our two guides, our two navigators, if you will, Lisa Bates or Barb Rodriguez. Their information is listed on your screen, or you can call 764-3721 and ask for healthcare navigation assistance, and they will uh, patch you through to one or two of those folks. Local food resources do remain available uh, through a network of community cupboards. Uh, we've been talking a lot about ACAP's community cupboard at our 771 Main Street uh, Customer Service Center near Walmart in Presque Isle. Uh, but these uh, community cupboards are generously supported and sponsored by various civic organizations, Girl Scout troops, and just community members in general. Uh, just a reminder that the community cupboards, in addition to having uh, non-perishable food items to uh, for folks to take what they need are also operating under the principle of give what you can. So if you are able to donate, we encourage you to just bring your non-perishable food items and place them directly into the cupboards. Um, these cupboards, uh, again, most of them are available 24-7, uh, except for ones like the Holton ACAP Military Community Cupboard, which is noted there from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or the Graves uh, Shop and Save Community Cupboard, which is operating during their hours. Uh, but most uh, community cupboard, the Caribou Rec Center is also open during their hours. 
Um, and this time of year, uh, specifically non-perishable food items that don't freeze are appreciated. Um, so cereals and things like that are most appreciated this time of year. If you are uh, experiencing food insecurity, please give us a call here at ACAP at 764-3721. And we can have you speak with a navigator about what resources aside from the community cupboards are available for you. We are also uh, putting the call out to our community, especially for those folks who are challenged with the high cost of energy right now. Uh, we know that a lot of families who normally aren't having as much difficulty as they are this year paying for their energy bills, uh, we want to be able to help you. And thanks to um, the uh, legislation passed by the Maine State Legislature at the beginning of January, there is now a program available for a one-time $800 benefit to families who are over income for traditional programs like the Home Energy Assistance Program. You can see the 2022 income uh, eligibility guidelines. That's the maximum dollar amount for those pro for this program, for eligibility in this program. We certainly encourage you to call us once you uh, have a quarter of a tank or less uh, fuel in your tank. Give us a call if you feel like you meet these income eligibility guidelines. It's a relatively simple application. Our reception team will complete it with you right over the phone. And generally, it's about a two-week turnaround to get fuel uh, on your vendor account, an $800 credit on your vendor account. Um, so we certainly encourage folks who are challenged, as many are with the high cost of fuel, and again, don't traditionally qualify for programs, to give us a call, 764-3721. It's the winter energy relief payments. And speaking of fuel assistance, we continue to encourage folks who do qualify for the Home Energy Assistance Program, and you can see the income qualification guidelines there on your screen to please contact us. We've had over 1,400 new customers this year, but please don't be daunted by that number because we're oftentimes this time of year scheduling appointments within the same week. So there's plenty of appointment availability for folks. If your income level within the month that's noted there comes relatively close and you have out-of-pocket expenses for things like medical costs, um, co-pays, prescription drugs, things like that. We encourage you to contact us. The Home Energy Assistance Program can be a more sustaining benefit than the one-time winter energy relief payments that we that I just spoke about. This program uh, allows you to reapply each and every year, um, and our intake folks will work with you to, to gather other expenses and to assess whether or not you would be eligible for the Home Energy Assistance Program. Uh, the medical deductions can be taken off of your household income. So even if you're a little over income, we encourage folks to give us a call and to work toward applying for the Home Energy Assistance Program. Direct phone number for the Home Energy Assistance Program is 768-3053. We are also reminding folks that we are continuing to work as part of the Aroostook Cash Coalition to help households whose income was less than $58,000 in 2022 uh, with free tax appointments. Uh, those as a result of the uh, sudden uh, closure, although it's reopened now of the Aroostook Center Mall, uh, these appointments in Presque Isle have been moved to ACAP's Customer Service Center uh, near Walmart at 771 Main Street. We had the first ones last week um, and had a great turnout. You do have to schedule an appointment. There had been appointments in Fort Kent and in Holton as well, but those have all been taken for the season. Um, and certainly we encourage folks, there are limited appointments left. They're all in Presque Isle. You can give us a call at 764-3721 to schedule an appointment. This is a partnership with a number of community partners, including United Way of Aroostook, as well as the County Federal Credit Union, which is the cash sponsor of the Aroostook Cash Coalition. Um, and of course, our friends at New Ventures Maine, among others, are partnering to bring this program to you. In addition to getting your taxes prepared at no cost, afterwards, a, a, a cash coalition guide will meet with folks uh, to discuss how best to potentially use any return you might have coming for you and also assess what other programs and services from ACAP and other agencies you might be eligible for, especially at these challenging times with high inflation and costs on everything that help make things a little more uh, sustainable for you. Maine's Workforce Collaborative, which includes ACAP, continues to offer uh, sessions including uh, interviewing tips and tricks, making career choices, resume and cover letter development, job preparation and retention, and others. A link to the registration page can be found on the Workforce Development page of ACAP's website. 
And these are offered all via Zoom, so you can do them from the comfort of your own home. And they're excellent if you're needing assistance as you're looking to maybe upskill or get into the workforce. Uh, these uh, workshops are available to you. If you have any questions also, you can give us a call here at the agency and our team of coaches would be happy to uh, help you get linked into these, um, these periodic sessions that are offered online. Give what you can, take what you need is not only the principle of our community cupboards, it's also the principle of our community closet. The community closet project outside of our customer service center in Presque Isle is available to anyone in need 24 seven. As you can see here, um, coats, warm winter coats are greatly appreciated this time of year to help our community members stay warm. Uh, you can drop again 24-7 or you can pick up 24-7 at this outdoor community closet. Uh, we also encourage you if you are uh, dropping off items between 8 and 5 on weekdays to bring them into our office so our volunteers can sort them, uh, get them all hung up um, outside. We've also been running some special programs where we, when we have a large collection of clothing, have been doing on women, infant and children program days and others. Uh, inside clothing giving aways, uh, giveaways as well as we do in August when we have our back to school efforts um, and community members are very generous in donating their gently used clothes for that as well. So please do consider uh, stopping by if you are in need of clothing or if you are have clothing that you'd like to donate that family members might have outgrown or is no longer being used. We are also as a result of our Prevention teams efforts in the community to do some really great work, reminding you of the aroostook drug take back effort. Uh, those typically happen a couple of days a year, but the good news is uh, in the spring and the fall, the good news is, is that through partnerships with our own Aroostook County Police Departments, you can drop off your unwanted or unused medication at any county or county police department. Medications can also be dropped off at select pharmacies. Um, the, those can be accessed on our ACAP website. You can visit the prevention section of our ACAP website to get more information on that. We are also um, offering our community members Deterra uh, drug deactivation pouches uh, that we have at our centers. We're giving them away at tax appointments to seniors who want to uh, help deactivate some of their uh, medication as well. Uh, please do give us a call if we can give any assistance in um, prescription drug use um, uh, disposal at this time. And also, as our continuing partnership with the Maine Department of Health and Human Services and others, we're continuing to remind folks age six months and older that you're eligible to receive COVID-19 vaccines and obviously boosters as we move forward. Uh, please visit the maine.gov COVID-19 slash vaccines website. If you need assistance registering for a vaccine appointment, our receptionists are available to help you do that over the phone, 764-3721. We're also reminding folks that free COVID tests are available at two different websites that continue to recycle. Those are covidtest.gov and accesscovidtest.org. We are also offering free tests at our customer service center at 771 Main Street, as well as our locations in Fort Kent and in Holton, where we have major customer service centers there. And if you are in need of any assistance at this time, and we didn't talk about a specific program that's available to you, we have a team of navigators that are available to connect with. Uh, they can be reached at 764-3721, and they're really great people who know a lot of the services, not only the 40 plus programs that ACAP offers, but our fellow um, social service agencies and healthcare agencies and others in Aroostook County, please do consider giving us a call if you are in need of any assistance. We don't want community members struggling at these challenging times, and we are here to help. So again, our navigators are available to speak with you. Just a phone call away, 764-3721. And that's this week's news and information that you can use. I'm so pleased to welcome to the program first, uh, one of our repeat guests, who's a member of our own prevention team, our community educator, Brandy Perry. Brandy, welcome back to ACAP Today. It's nice to have you. Thanks, Jason. It's nice to be here. All right. And welcoming a first time guest, one of our uh, many partners uh, in organizations, this one uh, beyond just our community here in Aroostook County, a bit of a global um, impact uh, with this organization. And that's uh, Nicole Madia, who is an education program specialist with Lions Quest, which we're going to learn about here in just a minute. And uh, Nicole, welcome to ACAP today. It's great to have you. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. So, Nicole, before I get into Brandy about our use of Lions Quest, let's get a foundational understanding from you about what this program is all about. 
Sure. So as you mentioned, we are affiliated with Lions International. So for anyone who might be aware or remember, you know, the local Lions Club, they do support this program. Lions Quest has been in existence for almost 40 years. We are a prevention program, a social emotional learning program. And we've also recently started incorporating anti-bullying components into our school curriculum and our after school programs and community expansions. So we've seen a great need, especially, you know, since the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, a lot of students, you know, and youth and young people really need the components of this program. Great, so Brandy, um, that's certainly what I think our prevention team was hearing in your interactions with school districts across Aroostook County a very high level of need, especially um, in this sort of quasi post pandemic era, if you will, uh, social emotional learning is huge, correct? Very much so, yes. So what were you hearing from some of the school partners in terms of this is really an area that we want some assistance in? And then how did you come upon Lions Quest and end up making uh, this this partnership? So in uh, the school year last year, I started going into schools to do restorative practices, which helps build community and repair harm within um, relationships. And as I got to know the students and the teachers and the staff in the schools that I was in, they um, asked if I could do things like character education or if I did social emotional learning. And at that point, it that was a very new term for me. And so I did a little research into it and had a chat with Meg Higgeman, the uh, my manager. And we thought, why not see if we can provide that? Um, because this year we lost our social emotional specialist at ACAP. And so there was no one to provide that service to schools and being in such a rural area, the schools up here don't have access to those resources as some of the bigger ones do. And so we thought, why not provide that service? And so we did some research and we asked the teachers in Aroostook County what curricula they had heard about or what they knew or if any of them were using them. And it came down to two and Lion's Quest was one of the most popular choices. And since we have Lions Clubs here in Aroostook County, we figured we could kind of help uh, keep that language uh, going throughout the schools as well. So that when, when people utilize the Lions Clubs, then there's not a, a whole new language to learn. So how does it work, Brandy? Is it are members of our prevention team that are locally it, using this curriculum? Is it teachers in the schools? Are we receiving, or is it all of the above? Are we receiving support um, remotely from, from folks at Lions Quest? So we did receive a grant from Lions Quest or, or one of the Lions Clubs mm -hmm. to be able to provide the curriculum from our prevention team members, but also if there were teachers that wanted to use SEL in their classroom, then that grant also provided the curriculum to the teachers to use for their specific classes. And so we have four of our prevention team members who are learning different grade levels uh, for this specific curriculum. And then we have I want to say about 10 teachers in the county who who took advantage of this opportunity to get the curriculum for their grade level, and they have started using it in their classrooms. Wonderful. So, Nicole, let's let's do a dive into what is actually Lions Quest in terms of the curriculum that Brandy's speaking about and what uh, parents and children can expect uh, that they will be um, engaging in um, as we move forward here. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, um, you know, traditionally for many years, we've been in the K through 12 school system. So the curriculum at that level, we actually have specific grade levels, you know, if the program was being implemented continuously, the, the, you know, curricula is designed to build upon each other. So the student experienced Lions Quest in kindergarten, they would also experience it in first grade, second grade, all the way up through 12th grade. Now, one of the things that I did mention too, is we have 
recently been adapting our curriculum to serve community needs. So we have an example, we piloted a program in Alabama using the high school curriculum and adapting it to, to fit the juvenile justice system. So in these programs, in the traditional school system, you know, students certainly might learn about managing their emotions, you know, even simple things like expressing gratitude, how to give a compliment, those sorts of things. Whereas in the other aspect, in the community focused aspect, we incorporate things like understanding triggers. Um, so uh, service learning is a, is a large component as well of the program. And so one of the things that we try to do, but we understand that a lot of times, it, you know, it may not always be feasible given home situations is we do try to incorporate parents or adult caregivers, you know, in the ideal model, schools or community focused programs, you know, would have some sort of either parent meeting, you know, some sort of uh, adult focused aspect of it as well. But again, we understand that a lot of that varies based on home situations. And so it's not a requirement of the program, but it is something certainly that is available to students. Great. So I'm going to bring up um, some information that Lions Quest has available um, publicly, um, and this uh, both looks at on the on the right hand side of our screen, if you will, quite frankly, the need um, for for such programs, and then uh, sort of three pillar areas that, um, that that some of the the efforts with Lions Quest fall under. So if you want to speak to that, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. So looking at if you look on the left there at the school climate you know one of the things that we've really seen uh we've seen increases in academic performance and we've seen decreases in things like in school suspensions out of school suspensions um detentions so that's that's a huge positive for us we try to make you know like i said the lessons adaptable um they are community focused as well and of course it's something that um we include a school climate survey as well. So really focusing on things like, um, you know, have students, like I mentioned, some of those in school suspensions, have those decreased? How is the respect between students and adults, you know, students and teachers? And of course, like I mentioned, the service learning unit, um, being part of Lions International, you know, service is is huge for us. Our motto is we serve. And so incorporating that idea of service, you know, into the the curriculum, we find to be very transformative as well for students, especially again, depending on what their previous circumstances might be, their background. So looking then at the middle pillar there, obviously, like I mentioned, you know, in the traditional school setting, the program is designed by grade levels. So there is a specific curriculum, you know, for grades K through 12. Um, we do offer, of course, you know, professional training as well, looking at the band there on the right. So one of the things that I know we have coming up with ACAP is we're looking to do a virtual training for instructors, especially now given the weather, you know, virtual seems to be the way to go right now. And then come the summertime before the school year starts, we would be looking to do some actual in-person instruction. And what's nice, especially for, you know, our, our teachers is that we've designed the program so that licenses are good for five years. So if a teacher has a license, you know, they have all of the online access to the materials they need. They can print out materials for students if they desire, but they don't have to. You know, we try to make it as adaptable as possible because we understand certainly to, especially as we look globally, you know, resources might not be something that instructors or students have access to um, things like internet, you know, so we really try to make it, you know, as as easy to present, as adaptable as we possibly can. Great. So it really does um, seem like this is something, I mean, we, we all sort of feel it um, in terms of the need, in terms of what we hear through the media, what we see on social media, 
what those of us who are parents sort of experience from our teens, but the statistics really do indicate here talking about seven in 10 teens see anxiety and depression as significant issues among their peers and in their communities. And uh, and, 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 the, and, and the other things go on in terms of students feeling less safe at school, uh, even in communities that are more rural and isolated, like Aroostook County, we're a part of a global community, and I think folks are seeing that, and then seeing where anxiety disorders are our most common mental illnesses in the United States, infecting, affecting more than 25% of children. And I know, Brandy, that's a lot of um, some of the work that's done um, here in Aroostook County by our own prevention team, because oftentimes, things that are impacting teens, anxiety causing things then do turn um, into a more challenging behaviors and challenging decisions that prevention, you know, whether it's through substance use or tobacco prevention and other things like that, which your team is really dedicated to, to, to working towards. So this is sort of looking at the big picture of things and more some of the causative effects of what might cause a teen or a youth uh, to turn to substances or, or to make poor choices, correct? Yes. So I kind of I kind of answered that question for you. Sorry about that. So are you are you and the team um, excited about this work and how it's beginning? It seems like you're hitting both educators and students because there's obviously the curriculum component to this, but also the direct service. Yeah, we as a prevention team, our focus is very much on the youth in the county because COVID did kind of um, affect them as well a little bit. And so we uh, we noticed that they were they were struggling with their mental health. And I think COVID kind of brought that into the light that these students are are struggling as much as the parents are. And so for a, a good two years, they didn't really have what you know what you or I grew up with, where we had someone teaching us how to react and respond to different situations and and triggers and so they're just kind of they were just kind of flying by the seat of their pants if you will and um and and we did have a lot of that component of the drug use and vaping and tobacco use but what about like catching it before they start that and one of the things that we noticed is or that we realized they needed was that guidance in in how to regulate their their selves and and be able to handle those difficult situations without turning to the less healthy options that are available so nicole as as brandy mentions regulate i think there's two of the components i'm going to bring up another uh, slide here uh, to show folks that uh, that this program focuses on and those are self-awareness and self-management so maybe if you could speak to each of these and the work that's done with youth to, to bring awareness and sort of education around these components to help youth um, actually regulate and cope yes absolutely so this, these two components are a part of our larger um, evidence-based practices. We are, you know, we we're a castle recommended organization as well. So we follow that model, you know, beginning with these two components of self-awareness and self-management. I'm going to talk a little bit just for a second here about the, the results that we've seen, you know, as we've adapted the program into the community. I mentioned earlier that we have had a pilot program with juvenile justice, and we're in our second cohort right now, and it's, um, we've seen a lot of really exciting results, and we definitely think that, you know, there's a future in other community coalitions as well. So it's something, too, that self-awareness, you know, um, there was this, there's a, a, a young individual who recognized through the juvenile justice system, you know, he, he was asked, you know, about when he feels angry and whatnot. And, and the response that was elicited was, um, you know, I feel angry when I go home and there's nothing to eat. So it shed light on a larger problem as well of food insecurity. Um, and so that was something that, you know, that self-awareness, not only was this particular, you know, program, the Lions were able to then, you know, begin a food pantry that was able to help, but it was also something that, that recognition then 
you know, there is a deeper cause, a root cause area. And so um, with the self-management as well, you know, in another student in that uh, first pilot cohort really was able to, to help recognize their triggers. Um, you know, so it was something too that we actually had uh, the father of this individual comment that he had seen, you know, a noticeable change in his son um, through just, you know, learning how to kind of manage, you know, and um, handle those feelings of anger in healthy ways, you know, and that's, I think, also where we're really working to introduce our component of anti-bullying. We've been working on some curriculum revisions where we're really bringing that into focus because that is such a need that we've seen, especially over the last three years. Um, you know, and kids are getting bullied in so many ways, whether it's in person at school, whether it's online through cyberbullying. And, you know, it really is having a tremendous impact on their health, their mental health. And just, you know, those feelings of worth, of self-esteem. Um, I don't know if that helps answer your question. I kind of went on a little bit there, Jason. No, no, I think that that does. I think that that sort of provides the sort of the underpinning for why things are as, are, are as they are for youth and really in society today. Brandy, I, I, I want to pick a few things out of what Nicole said that I think must, I mean, we do often, I know you do often uh, hear that with youth that you're working with, that, that, that these circumstances and the conditions that they're facing are oftentimes causative by other things like food insecurity mm -hmm. that was mentioned. So as a, as a team member in an agency that has a robust level of programs and helps connect and navigate people to services, I imagine that the combination of having a curriculum like this, but also being able to sort of have a basket of resources that you can rely on and colleagues that you can rely on to help youth and help families be able to navigate some of these systems that can oftentimes seem complex and overwhelming and really be uh, foundational challenges that if you don't get past will be very difficult to reach them in the social and emotional ways that they need to be connected to. Yeah, um, it's it's so true. And one of the things that I really like about this is that the parents uh, are also involved in the curriculum in one way or another. And so they get to learn what their children are learning and they get to start using that at home. But then if there is something that comes up where, you, you know, Lion's Quest or sort of practices can't fill in that gap, then it's nice to be able to come to my team or come to ACAP uh, employees and say, hey, this, this school or this person really has this need. What's the best way we can help them? And so instead of just focusing on, on one uh, tool, you know, so instead of just focusing on SEL, they have a whole plethora of resources at their hands to give them the best life that that is possible. Wonderful. So Nicole, there's a couple of other concepts that we that Lions Quest looks at, and I think you've you've alluded to some of those, and certainly Brandy has as well. But those are both the social awareness and as well as the relationship skills. When you were talking about bullying, oftentimes those are are those are challenges that happen as a result of. The, the lack of relationship skills, if you will. So, so talk about the critical importance of those things in the curriculum and, and, and how those play into effect. One of the biggest components for the curriculum for us is the consistency. So I think that's where, you know, in the school setting, especially, you know, it was really important to have you know, the same person kind of presenting the materials and whatnot. One of the things that we've seen, I'm thinking of a, a club in Maryland who runs this as an after school program. One of the biggest things is just kind of establishing that trusting relationship, you know, um, making students feel like they're safe in the environment. You know, some of the things that, as I've mentioned, as Brandy has mentioned, that might come up in the course of conversation or discussion, it can be pretty heavy, can be, you know, cer certainly areas of vulnerability. And so I think too, that having those positive role models, those, you know, consistent adults 
who are actually advocating for these youth who are on their side, you know, that helps as well. And so, yes, one of the other areas that we really focus on is the idea of responsible decision making. You know, it's something that, um, I mean, I'm sure I don't have to, you know, share some of the statistics, you know, of, you know, poor decisions and poor choices and coping mechanisms that, you know, may not necessarily be healthy for students. So that is certainly an element. Um, you know, again, the modeling as well is a huge component of our program, as you've seen through, you know, most of the slides here, modeling is a consistent feature in all of the lessons that are presented. And that's, again, where that, you know, demonstration of trust, of consistency really becomes important for the youth. Indeed. And I know, Brandy, you see that in schools every day and with youth that you're working with, correct? Right. So let's get um, last thoughts on this from each of you um, as our, our time together has almost come to an end here. Uh, Brandy, your thoughts on the opportunity and anything else you want to share to offer to be able to connect uh, schools and youth in Aroostook County and families with, uh, with Lions Quest? I am so excited that I have an actual curriculum that I can follow that has been tested and proven to be beneficial to students and teachers alike. And uh, I am so looking forward to helping bring this into the schools myself. But if there are any teachers in the county that are interested in learning about uh, Lion's Quest and potentially using it in their classroom, they can uh, reach out to us at at the, the phone number 764-3721, or they can send an email to prevention at acap-me.org and someone on the prevention team will reach out to them and get them set up with what they need. Um, and then we are we are in the planning phases of getting that online training taken care of so that the teachers have a little more confidence maybe about starting to use the curriculum. And, and, and I am looking forward to an in-person training in the, uh, in the summer, so. Indeed. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll be a little while before the snow melts, but um, yeah. it'll be here before you know it. So both. Uh, Nicole, um, your last thoughts, anything we haven't talked about, you wanted to make sure that the, those folks viewing this edition of ACAP today certainly walk away with? Yes. Uh, the one thing always to mention, and I think, you know, just to reiterate, this is kind of how ACAP actually reached out to us. Because we're affiliated with Lions International, you know, one doesn't have to be a lion or part of a local lions club to implement the program. Certainly, we have, you know, schools, community organizations who reach out to us, you know, so if it is something that there is interest elsewhere, they can, you know, individuals can definitely reach out to us. We would help connect them with the local Lions Club. Like Brandy mentioned, there is that opportunity for grant funding there. So it really helps to offset the cost for schools, for community organizations. A lot of times getting the local Lions to apply for that grant, there is no cost at all. So um, I'm just really excited to have this opportunity to work, you know, with your organization and with the Lions of Maine. I think that the conversations I've had, it sounds like it's a really exciting direction and I can't wait to see the results. Yes, we're most grateful to our Lions Club and all of our local civic organizations here in Aroostook County. They make up a huge part of the fabric of our communities and, and it's a great connection that we're able to, um, you know, demonstrate to youth um, some of the good that um, clubs, service organizations like the Lions Club do in our community beyond just what we already know. This is a great um, new addition um, for folks up here to become aware of anyway. I know that this is been something that's been happening in other parts of the country, but we're glad that we're able to sort of do a deeper dive uh, here in Aroostook County with this work. So Nicole, thank you so much. Brandy, thank you so much for being my guests on this week's edition of ACAP Today. Before we leave the two of you and our viewers, we're first going to, as we do at each point in the broadcast, bring to you our photo of the week. Um, and this week's photo of the week, our snapshot of the week from here in, at ACAP is a, a, a young child in our Snap Ed Eat Well, Play Hard program who was getting a lesson um, in one of our programs down in Southern Aroostook, Holton and Dyer Brook, 
uh, held those earlier this week, um, getting new ideas for tasty fruits and vegetable snacks. So we uh, certainly encourage this youth to continue a lifetime of healthy eating behaviors and thank our SNAP Ed team and our entire team across Arusta County for the wonderful work they do across many disciplines here in Arusta County each and every day. That's our snapshot of the week, and that's our time with you this week. On behalf of all of us here at Aroostook County Action Program, thank you so much for all you do to make our communities a better place, and we're here for you if you need our assistance. We'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP Today. Have a great week, everyone.